All right. So I've realized there's some interest in a guide on Dunhill lighters. How to buy them, how to fix them, keep them running, all that. <clears throat> so even though I don't have the best camera set up right now, I'm going to try to make a nice little guide on what these are and why you want them and uh, how to keep them running. So these are two Dunhill lighters, Dunhill Series 70 roller gas lighters. They were made, oh geez, I don't know, from the 50s to the 2000s. Why do you want one? Well, these are heirloom quality lighters. Um, if I can actually get one of these apart and show it on camera, you'll see there's not a single plastic piece in this entire thing but the O-rings that keep it sealed. Uh, th these lighters, if you buy them, you can hand them down to your grandkids and your great-grandkids. Plus which, they're just kind of cool and elegant. And uh, those of us that are into pipes and smoking or even EDC might want one just because they're neat. <clears throat> when Dunhill wanted to produce these, they hired an out-of-work board Swiss engineer to come up with a design and produce them. And everything you've, you might have heard about... Swiss manufacturing and Swiss design kind of holds true for these. There's a, a million little intricate parts in these, and you couldn't make one today to this level of quality. You couldn't make a lighter today like this and make any money on selling it. So somebody asked me about fakes of these when you want to go buy them. Well, because of how intricate they are, I don't think there really are fakes. Um... You know, look at uh, look at this piece here. This is the needle valve that goes into one of these, and uh, over here is the uh, the gas control valve that mates up with the other end of it. And I know I'm awkward as heck, but you know, my first time on camera, and I'm looking through the camera, so excuse me. Um, you can see these are finely machined little pieces. This is what makes the lighter work. Um, and you can't, I mean, you know, you wouldn't make back your money put into manufacturing something like this. As I say, even Dunhill can't do it. A new Dunhill lighter, you can buy them, but they cost a thousand bucks and they've cheaped out on the insides of them because they just can't make any damn money off them. So if you, if you don't have one of these and my recommend, and you want one, my recommendation to you is go on eBay and get one. Even, even if it's dirty, you can clean it. Even if it's tarnished, you can fix it up. Just go buy an old used one, and, you know, we'll go into how to fix it and keep it running. If you have one and you're not really sure how to keep it going, this video is the video for you. Because, at least for right now, that's what I'm going to mainly try to get into. Now, you buy one of these lighters, the first thing you got to do is fill it up with gas, right? So, here's how you do that. On the bottom of the lighter... There's uh, two, two things. This round, big round port with all the circles, that's your fill port. And this little circle thing with a half-slotted screw on it here, that's the gas control valve. That's important, but we're going to pass on it for right now. We'll just talk about the, uh, the fill port. So to open the fill port, you press down on this disc and you rotate it. A quarter turn with your thumb, and then it pops up like that. See, and you can take your fingernail and pull it right out. And this is the piece you end up with. This is the fill cap. And then there, in there, is the filler valve. Now, if you've had a more modern lighter, you'll realize that doesn't look like anything like what a modern lighter has. And so you need to buy a special kind of butane to, uh, to fill these. And what I recommend you get is this stuff, Vector. They say it's the finest butane and it's 14 times filtered. Bah, that's not why you buy it. The reason you buy it is this right here. In the cap, you'll see that there's five pieces missing. Those are five uh, different adapters for vintage lighters with funky fill valves like you have. So this is the reason why you want to buy Vector Butane right here. This is the adapter you need. Um, take a good look because you'll recognize which, I don't know which number it is in the cap, but you'll recognize it if you take a good look at this picture. It's a little plastic bit that snaps out of the cap and fits right over the nozzle. If it was a modern butane lighter, you could use that nozzle just like it is because it's a vintage one. you got to put that over it like that. Once you do that, take your lighter, put your can in like that, and press down. 
Now, when you press down, gas is probably going to shoot everywhere. That's okay. Most of it's going to go into the lighter. Watch. Oof, look at that blur from all that gas coming out. That was... Now, even with a little squirt like that, when you hold the lighter, you'll feel it's cooled down. And that cooling is what tells you that gas has gone into the lighter. If gas just sprays back everywhere, that's okay. But if it's spraying back and your lighter's not getting any gas, not cooling down like that, your valve might be jammed. That's okay. We can fix that. But I'll assume that it worked, and that's how you refill your lighter. Now, once you've got it filled, you can put that back on so we don't lose it. You can go ahead and open the cap. If you open this cap, and you hear gas shooting out, if you can hear a hiss, that's too much gas. So don't try to light it just yet. Um, you have some adjustments that you have to do first. If you try to light it, it's just going to do a blowtorch impression and annoy you. So, but this lighter's working, so the next thing I want to talk about is how to change the flint. To change the flint, open the lighter, and now you'll see that we have... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. You have the flint wheel here, the, the metal piece that the flint wheel resides in here, and then there's this bar with a notch in it up at the top. And all you got to do to refill it is hook your fingernail or something in that notch and try to do it with this safety pin. Well, I can't. Okay, so take your fingernail, hook it in that notch, and that should pivot out forward towards you like that. Your flint. flint is in there. See? Now you can just put a new flint in. Make it a mess. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. This, like I said, this is very awkward to film. Put a new flint in there. Snap it shut. Close your lighter. And you're good to go. Now, Sometimes, when you push that little bar to the left, it doesn't snap open like it did for me. That's okay. Just hold the bar to the left and pivot it forward towards you with your finger. There's a little spring that makes it snap open like that, and it's very fiddly, so if anybody's worked on this lighter, they might not have put it in right, or it might not be there at all. No big deal. You can just swivel it towards you, replace the flint per normal. Now, the flint on these um, is not exactly like, say, the Zippo flint that you might buy in a drugstore. The Zippo flint's a little bit smaller in diameter. It'll still work just fine. If you want the, the technically correct thing, you want to get a real Dunhill flint, even though it doesn't really make much difference. But when I get to talking about repair kits, when you get a repair kit online, this is what you're going to get, and it's going to come with a little flint in there. And I already used the one in here, so you can't see. But there'll, there'll be a little flint in there, and you can replace your flint with a brand new one that's like the, the technically correct one and all of that. So, <clears throat> on that topic, now, now that we've got a lighter and we know how to fill it and put the flint in, it's more likely than not that your lighter will leak. And if it does, um, you're going to need one of these, a repair kit. There's... At least two people on eBay that sell them, but go to this guy, Vintage Dunhill Roller Gas Collectors. What little I understand about this guy, he's an older gentleman that collects these lighters and really has a passion for them, and he makes a few peanuts on selling these repair kits. Now, I will. Uh, this is a five lighter repair kit, and it's not complete because I've messed with it already, but. When you go to buy one of these, you get everything you need. Um, you get these forceps. You get a safety pin. Mine's a little cut, but it's still there. You get a little screwdriver that I have kicking around somewhere to, uh, to undo the screws with. You get the O-rings. You, um, you, you get the little cloth filter pads. You get those little round valve spacers. Everything you need in here. And like I say, it's an older gentleman that probably doesn't make it much money and just does it because he honestly loves these things. So buy from him. 15 bucks for a two-lighter repair kit. That's his eBay name right there, Vintage Dunhill Roller Gas Collectors. You're probably going to need one. If you're buying a lighter on eBay, just get the repair kit alongside of it and you'll be good to go. So now, um, <clears throat> what, what do you do if you have a lighter that leaks and you want to repair it? Well, I will show you. Okay, I will show you. Uh, 
This, this lighter is repaired and it doesn't leak, but we'll take it apart and we'll show you what you got to do. So the first thing you got to do is you got to undo this little valve down here at the bottom. This is the gas control valve, see? Um, when you take it out, what, you, what it's going to look like is it's going to be this little, uh, this little thing right here. Okay, it's going to have an O-ring in it. This is a fresh O-ring. You can tell because it's got a nice rounded profile in it. Yours is probably going to be flattened out and old. Um, if your light is leaking and you weren't, weren't rich enough to spring for the repair kit, well, what you can do is you can get a little bit of silicone grease from AutoZone or somewhere else and you can grease up this O-ring. Don't try to take it off if it's old because it'll probably just snap in half, but you can slather some grease on it and it might seal it up well enough to let you keep going for now. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take this lighter and you're going to take out the gas control valve. And this one's just been filled, so it's going to shoot gas everywhere. That's okay. This gas, if this vector shit at least, doesn't stink particularly bad. Uh, as long as you don't have any open flames, it's not hugely dangerous. So there's no need to be a, you know, a pansy about taking this valve out. Well, there wasn't very much gas in there at all. Jeez. All right. So now we've got our gas control valve out. Now, the next fiddly thing that we got to do is we got to watch out because there's a little bitty spring down inside that hole, and it's real, real tiny, and it's liable to fall out at any moment now that, that, now that this piece is out. It should be, ideally, kind of sticking on to the back of the needle valve. That's the next part we're going to pull out, but we don't know. Uh, it might fall out at any time, so do this somewhere over a, a plate or a tray where you can catch something that's going to fall. So now... We've got that out, and our spring might... No, ours, ours is good, so it's stuck on the back of the needle valve, and it's not just going to slip out, but yours might not be, so be aware. So next thing we got to do, um, you see this piece right here. This is the needle valve. It moves up and down, see? When the, when the, valve is, when the cap is shut, this snuffer piece right here, which is also spring-loaded, is going to push down on this pin, and that's what closes out the seal of gas, or, uh, sorry, what, uh, what seals the gas flow off. Come on, focus light, focus camera, focus. For Pete's sakes. Like I say, I'm not a very experienced cameraman, so we'll just kind of work with what we got here. Now, what we want to do is we want to push this needle valve out of this hole but we want to be gentle because it's a, it's a kind of a delicate piece so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a toothpick a toothpicks important because it's wooden it's not gonna scratch or mung this mung this up and we're gonna take and we're just gonna gently push down on this needle valve it takes a little bit of finesse and sometimes it's easier if you adjust this wheel all the way up okay I'm gonna push down. Let's see, see how it, see how it just went down in there now, and we're gonna gently push it out the bottom of the lighter, and at some point it'll just fall like that. See, now, now, <clears throat> there's, come on, focus. See that tiny little spring? That's what you're watching out for. If you lose this spring, it's not the end of the world. Your lighter will still work, but it's going to be a little bit more of a pain to adjust. And that's the one weakness of this design is it is a pain to adjust. So try to keep that spring somewhere. Um, it fits. See it? It fits on that little um, diameter right there. So take that spring off and keep it somewhere handy. Now... What you want to do next is you want to replace the the O-rings. This O-ring here and the one on, on there. And you can do that, and I'm not actually going to because these are brand new O-rings, but you can do that by taking this safety pin and gently, gently hooking it. Well, maybe I will do it. Okay, you hook it like that. And just pull it right over the edge. And then, you know, installation is the reverse of removal for the new O-ring. You can just take it on your finger there. And you can 
put it like that just work it right over and there now you've got a new o-ring now what you want to do is in this repair kit you will have gotten a packet of silicone o-ring grease and two toothpicks you want to take another toothpick and take this Ziploc baggie of o-ring grease out get some grease on the end of your toothpick and grease up this ring real grease up this o-ring real good get get all kinds of grease in there because the grease is going to greatly enhance the uh, the sealing power of these o-rings and greasing them up behind the o-ring before you put it on which i forgot to do and then over the o-ring once it is on is going to greatly increase your chances of not having a leak all right now these needle valves often come with little spacers like that in them. And those allow you to, um, or, or those, what those do uh, is they decrease the amount of gas coming out of the lighter at all points. So if you have a lighter that's acting like a blowtorch after you reassemble it, you might need to add another spacer on there. Some of these come with no spacers, some come with one, some come with two, and you will have gotten hopefully a few more in your kit. If not, you can even buy a little baggie of extra spacers like I have here, again from that same guy on eBay. But whether, whether or not you're going to include a spacer with it when you put it all back together is down to, uh, to playing around with it and seeing how it works. So now that we've replaced this O-ring, we're going to get this spring and we're going to put it back on the back of this valve. See, it should, it should be tight enough to fit to just stick on there like that. And then we're going to put this valve back in our lighter. All right. Now. Inside of this lighter, you see how that bore is obstructed by a metal piece? That's a piece that moves back and forth to adjust the flame when you crank this. If, if it's blocking the hole like it currently is, you want to just jiggle the lighter around till it doesn't. There's, there's a pin inside of here that this rail will sit on, and if you you jiggle it around a little bit it'll fall back onto that pin and now you can see right through the lighter okay when you go to put this needle valve back you should not have to force it nothing you do with this needle valve should require any kind of force because it's a delicate piece and you'll just bend it if you try to force it back and that rail isn't sitting if you can't see clear through your lighter don't try to put that valve back okay just give it a jiggle till that piece sets down and you can put it back all right now we can push that back in right now we'll just put that aside and we'll focus on this piece now with this piece the o-ring needs to be replaced and greased in the same way i think we can probably skip that because you've already seen how to do it uh, to get the O-ring on there nice and easy, hook one side of it into that screw slot and just work it around with your finger and it'll pop right on. Um, the instructions you'll get with your kit recommend forceps. You can use them. Put the O-ring on, uh, on the forceps, stretch them open, and just sort of wiggle it over and get it on. I think that's more difficult than just hooking the O-ring into this slot and working it around and pushing it down and on with your finger. All right. Now, once you've replaced and greased that O-ring, you got to pay attention to the packing. There's packing in this end of the valve, and um, if that packing is old and raggedy looking, you might want to replace it. You you can uh, you've got the um, the little pellets of felt in your uh, in your kit if you've got the repair kit, and you can just take a pin and you can pick out. The old, the old packing, you can just pick it out and push in and, and pack in the new packing. This, now, this one, I've already replaced the packing. And at the time, my repair kit wasn't in, and I was impatient. So you know what I did? I got a Q-tip, and I pulled um, the, the, the felt off the end and rolled it into a little wad, but like half the size of a BB, and I packed that down in there. Um, 
Now, the way that the flame control on these work, okay, is that the packing that's in there, as you tighten the screw, gets compressed by a little um, valve that's behind that spring, and it squishes that packing down to let less gas through. So to have more packing in this valve is not always better. Sometimes it's a matter of experimentation, how much you need to get a nice consistent flame. And um, that can be kind of the theme of repairing these, is experimenting, taking them apart and fiddling a little bit and then putting them back together. You're not always going to get a 100% perfect result on the first try. That's not to say it's difficult, just that you might need a little bit of patience. So I think I've got the ideal amount of packing in there right now, so I'm not going to try picking it out and putting more in. Instead, I'm just going to put it back. Now you can push your needle valve up and in there using this, right? You don't need to you don't need to get a metal tool and run the risk of popping that spring in there loose or screwing up the ceiling surface. Just push it in, get your little bitty screwdriver, push it down, screw it in. Now now it's it's just it's just touching down there. It's not tightened up yet, okay? And this lighter is now reassembled. Now, besides adjusting it, for 90% of lighters out there, that's all you got to do. That's it. It's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, this whole video, I think we've been on this less than 10 minutes fixing this thing up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some gas in our newly repaired lighter. Beautiful. It's going to hiss a little bit. That hiss means it might be leaking. Now, I bet you, when I open this lid, this thing is going to piss gas out all over the place. Yep, there we go. So, that's bad. If it, w w When you can open the lid, and I hope you can hear the hiss, yep, that, that means that uh, this thing will be a flamethrower if you ignite it. So, to cut that hiss down, we're going to tighten this. Sometimes we're going to tighten it a lot. We're just going to go until we don't hear so much of a hiss. It's getting quiet now, see? That's about right. Then we're Now once we can hardly hear that hiss, we're going to clamp down on it a little more by turning this down. When you hold this lighter in your hand and you go down on this, that makes the flame go down. When you go up on it, it makes the flame go up. So we're going to tighten that down a ways. Okay. Beautiful. We can't, when we open this now, we can't hear a hiss. So now we're going to see if it works. Beautiful. Big fucking flame. Um, I'm sorry, I don't dare to move my camera to show it to you any better than I can now because it's barely staying where it is. So now our flame is huge. It's too huge. Um, so we're going to grab our screwdriver and we're going to tighten this down a little more, make it a little smaller. We're going to experiment now. Oh, now our flame's wicked tiny. All right, so now we're going to play around a little. Oh, look at that. Our flame control is working, see? Um... Our flame's getting higher and lower as we want. We can adjust it to our taste. And now our lighter is fixed. It's working. That's it. That's all there is to fixing one of these. Two O-rings, a little bit of grease, a little bit of patience, and a little bit of finagling. Um, now, as after you've filled this for the first time after having it apart, there's still going to be a little bit of air inside of your tank. So this flame at least to start with, is going to be a little jumpy. It's going to want to go higher and lower every time you open the lid and start the lighter up. What you want to do is you just want to use it for a while. Um, you, want to, you want to use it till that tank has emptied and refilled, and the only thing left in there is butane, no air. So if your lighter has a flame height that's a little bit jumpy, a little inconsistent, just use it for a little while and be patient with it. And, uh, and hopefully that'll go back to how it should be once the tank is purged of all air. Now, the other 
problem that these can have gets a little bit involved, okay? When you, um, if that needle valve, see, when the lid's shut, the needle valve gets pushed down by the snuffer in the lid. And if gas, if that doesn't stop the flow of gas, it's because the seal in the needle valve is bad. And the symptom of that is when you open the lid and you go to light your lighter, there's going to be a poof. And sometimes you'll see a little bit of flame up in here as all the gas that's collected under that lid has burned off. That is also not the end of the world. What, what happens then is then you have to repair your needle valve. This is, this is a spare needle valve. You can take this apart and there's an itty bitty tiny seal in the end that you can replace with a piece of a cut up O-ring. Um, I don't think I can actually do that on camera because it's extremely fiddly. Um, and this valve's working, so I don't really want to screw with it unless I have to. But these valves can be fixed, and uh, if necessary, I will attempt to make a video showing how. Um, if if um, I, I also know that vintage Dunhill Roller Gas Collectors guy that I mentioned. Um, he's awesome, and... Uh, he says right in his instruction sheet that he rebuilds needle valves and you can call him or email him with any questions you may have. So if you have a problem with your needle valve and you don't want to deal with fixing it, uh, give, give, drop him a line and see if he is willing to help you. Um, like I said, you know, that guy's dedication to these lighters just kind of makes me smile and I'm not sure he's making much money off of it. So... Uh, although I'm also available to answer questions, you know, feel free to deal with him and, uh, and use his services too. But if, if, if I can manage a better camera setup that will allow me to show it, we'll, we'll go into how to repair these needle valves. It's not, it's not especially difficult, it's just you're working with parts that are real tiny and it's fiddly. So yeah, I mean that's, that's more or less everything I can say about the Dunhill lighters that I have on the table. Um, I'm, I have another one coming in that's going to need some repair, um, and I have the, all the parts in the repair kit, and I'm waiting on a camera tripod so I can go and show you all the parts inside and show you how to take these things apart and give you a little more information. But if you've just bought a Dunhill off of eBay, that should be enough to get you up and running until I can make a better video. So... I hope that that helped you. Um, I hope that you buy one of these because they're an awesome deal. They're a great lighter. Um, you know, they're, they're classy. You can pass them down to your grandkids. And, uh, and yeah. So I think that's about all I can say for now. If uh, anybody has any questions on the video I just put out, feel free to uh, drop me a line. You know, leave me a comment. Uh, talk to me on, on Reddit or, where, or the, uh, the Reddit Pipe Tobacco community. You know, and we'll, we'll see if we can help you. Oh, yeah, and another thing. Um, a lot of these lighters are tarnished. That's okay. Uh, this was incredibly tarnished when I got it, and it's quite bright now. Just get you some uh, some Flitz polish, some Flitz metal polish at the drugstore, and put it on there with a Q-tip, wipe it off, and your lighter should be good to go. If you're going to buy one of these, don't be scared off just because of... Uh, of the fact that they're all tarnished and ugly looking, uh, you know, that's, that's okay. <laughs> we have the technology, we can bring them back. So yeah, any questions, let me know. Anything else I can help you with, let me know. All right, but we're reaching on a half an hour of me rambling now, so that's it for today. Thanks, and I hope it helps.